Hey BookTube, this is Friday Reads. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks. And I have five books to tell you about this week. And um, they're kind of all over the place. A couple of romances, one historical fiction, and then one kind of sci-fi and dystopian, and the other one kind of just weirdness. <laughs> Some hits and misses on the narrations too. So I will start out with the romances. The first one is The Real Deal. This is by Lauren Blakely. It is her latest release, and it is narrated on audio by Zachary Weber and Aaron Mellon. I rave about these narrators all the time because they're so good. They are so able to capture the characters, uh, convey the personalities really well, and they do everything right. They are true voice actors, and it, the narration was fantastic. The story is one of those fake boyfriend kind of stories where a girl needs uh, someone to go with her to her family reunion so her family will quit bugging her and trying to set her up with every available man that they can think of and get her to move back home to the small town where she's from. She currently lives in New York, so it's that story. And of course, you know, she and the fake boyfriend uh, fall in love. So it was very cute. Uh, nothing that will knock you out of the water, but between that and the narration, I'd give it about a 3.5, but I would round it down to three. So yeah, it was good. The other one that I read was called Hothead. It is book four in the Irresistible series by Stella Reese, and it is narrated on audio by John Masterson and Cassandra Miles. I loved John Masterson. I don't know why I like the guys so often better than the girls who are narrators, but I, he was great. He just captured this character so well. The character is a baseball player who is famous and cocky and self-centered and kind of in your face and you know he just got all that so well he just john masterson really captured that cassandra miles had a tendency to pronounce every one of her words so distinctly that it kind of got to where it bugged me had i been listening at just one speed normal speed it would have driven me up a wall but at 1.5 the speed it was great um, she really was able to also capture the character and everything else about her narration was perfect. So I'd say overall, it was really good. The story is again, one of those baseball player is a jerk and now needs to clean up his image. And so he hires a woman to be his girlfriend and then his fiance. So, you know, that's all. It was uh, pretty standard trope, pretty standard stuff. Uh, very entertaining, very much of a fun read, uh, available on Audible Romance, and I gave it three stars. The historical fiction book that I read was Last Year in Havana. This is by Chanel Clayton and narrated by Kyla Garcia and Frankie Marie Corzo. This narration was awful. <sighs> I thought it was awful. It was monotone, it was boring, it was slow. Um, it could have really injected so much energy into this story and it just didn't. It was, it plodded along and it was almost, I mean, I almost DNF the book because of it. Um, if you're gonna read this, I would not recommend that you lis uh, listen to it. I would read it in print. Um, as for the book, it is historical fiction. And I think if you go in expecting that it's historical fiction, you're gonna be a lot happier than if you go in and think that it's historical romance. Even though Goodreads has categorized it as that, and there is romance going on, this is really about the politics and the history of Cuba. And uh, more specifically, the revolution that happened when Fidel Castro came into power. It's told in dual timelines. You have a 19-year-old um, Elisa, who is from a very affluent family and gets involved with a revolutionary. And then you have her granddaughter, Marisol. I love that name so much. And she is um, a current day writer who goes to Havana to kind of just check out 
Havana and find out if it's anything like what her grandmother has always told her it's like. Her grandmother has since died, so she goes over, she's going to write a piece on the tourism and you know what it's like and all the high points of Havana and, or Havana and she stays with a friend of her mother or of her grandmother's and there is um, a grandson of this woman's that takes her around. He's actually a history professor and so he takes her around and shows her what Cuba is like today in um, and has been since Castro took over. Well, that's really interesting. It kept my attention because even though it moved slow, it um, was so engaging and interesting and brought to light a lot of um, the idea that when someplace is your country and your home, you need to fight for what is important to you. And if you don't have anything that's important to you, then uh, what are you? You know, if, if things are going on and you don't stand up and say something, then, you know, it's your own fault when bad things happen. And there are times when uh, you think things are gonna go one way and they go another way. You are for change, but you're maybe not for that kind of change. So really interesting, rich characters. And again, it could have been so good. When I was listening to this, I, there were times when I thought, oh man, another narrator would have said that so much better. So yeah, if you're gonna read this, definitely read it in print, definitely go in expecting historical fiction and not so much romance, even though there is romance in it. Great ending. I liked it. I gave it four stars, but it's really more like three and a half rounded up. And then I picked up Never World Week. This is by Marisha Pessel and it is narrated by Phoebe Stroll. I loved Phoebe Stroll. She has a higher register kind of speaking voice naturally that really lent itself to the main character who was telling the story. So I loved that. She did all the characters really well. There was one character that I thought could have had a little bit deeper voice, but yeah, that was so unremarkable. It really didn't matter. So I would say very high marks on the narration. The story is kind of a convoluted collection of tropes or uh, things that get thrown into a plot line that shouldn't make any sense. It should be a huge disastrous mess but it wasn't. It um, is the story of, is it five friends? I think it's five friends. And one of the friends is telling the story. And she is a girl that went to school with some other friends in high school and they've moved, you know, they're older now. And uh, she was the scholarship student, the one that, um, you know, went because somebody else paid for it. And the other four are rich kids. And so, her boyfriend died in uh, some kind of an unknown accident the year before. And so nobody knows what happened. They just know that he died and he was found and there were speculation about what happened. But uh, so this girl and her friends uh, go out to a bar one night and they come back and a man comes to the door and says, you've had a car accident and you're all in between life and death you are in the never world wake. And so you will be caught now in a time loop of about 11 hours. When you wake up, it's going to be the same day over and over and over again until you vote and decide who is the one person that is um, going to survive this car accident you've had. So that sets in motion a whole slew of things and you've got uh, these people behaving in all kinds of ways, trying to figure out how to get out of this loop of time. You've got some time travel happening, and then you've got the mystery of how this boyfriend died. So it, like I say, could be a convoluted mess, but it's not at all. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I think that in terms of tone and the idea that it's bizarre and it's this collection of things that shouldn't work together but do, it's a lot like the Mara Dyer trilogy by Michelle Hodkin, which again is YA, and I've said the same things about that trilogy. Um, so I think if you liked that, then you'll like this. Um, I've never read anything else by Marisha Pessel. I know she wrote Night Film, but the reviews on that are so all over the place that I never thought that I wanted to, to read it. So this was a pleasant surprise, and I really liked it. Gave it four stars. Then I picked up Vox, 
and this is by Christina Dolcher. It is adult dystopian narrated by Julia Whelan. Oh my gosh, so brilliantly. This narration was so good. I know I say I go hot and cold on Julia Whelan all the time, but I certainly enjoy her narration much more than I don't. I would say that she's probably one of my top favorites at this point. So um, the only thing I don't enjoy about her is her lower register for men, but it is so incidental in the way that she tells the story that you just forget, you don't even notice. So it was fantastic. This is a story that is very similar to The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I'm sure there will be lots of parallels drawn to that. And if you check Goodreads, there probably already are. It is um, a dystopian world in the near future in the US where women are um, only able to speak 100 words per day and they wear bracelets that will give them an electric shock if they go over that amount and as you know if you go over more words you get like the electric shock gets worse as you go so um, everybody all the women are fitted with these bracelets and they are kind of relegated to become housewives and moms. They can only watch certain things on TV. Their husbands lock up all the books. They're not allowed to read. Um, they're not taught to read in school. They're taught to count. And that's because 100 words a day. And the main character is a woman who is a brilliant scientist in terms of aphasia and stroke victims and linguistics. And so when the president's brother uh, has an accident that results in a head injury, she is called in because her husband is also a doctor, a medical doctor, who has the ear of the president because he is the president's science advisor. So um, she is brought in to help this brother because she was previously working on a serum that would affect um, and restore speech to aphasia victims or victims with aphasia, I don't know. But anyway, um, it is a very dynamic story. It, there's a lot going on and there are a lot of things that will drive you up a wall. If you are a feminist, you will you know, rage against this plot and I think it resolves very well. I think it's much more entertaining than The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I read that and I was bored and this was entertaining because you, it delves into conspiracy uh, territory. You've got lots of crazy stuff happening. You're never sure if this woman is gonna be taken out and shot because she speaks up. There's also always the fear that um, she's gonna get caught doing something that she shouldn't and there are a variety of things that she shouldn't be doing that she does. So yeah, it was a really good story. I did have some problems with it, but I'll talk about those in a separate um, review. So I ended up giving this one four stars. I thought it was, like I say, brilliant. So that was last week and uh, really interesting mix of things that I read. Uh, it was a really interesting week. So I uh, have a couple things on tap right now for this weekend, mostly romance, um, probably a little more than that. But um, yeah, I'll just tell you about them next week. Uh, other than that, not much else going on. So I hope you have a great weekend full of warm weather, sunshine, all the good things. And that's it for now for me. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, baby,